Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Up in Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Through storytelling and conversational interviews, this weekly radio show offers listeners firsthand insight in starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk taking, and the commonalities of successful people. Connect with Carrie through her candid, often funny, and informative weekly blog, where you'll read and comment on life as wife, mother, daughter, and entrepreneur. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. I'm Carrie McCoy, and like Tim said, it's time for me to get up in your business. For the next hour, my guest, Richard Doich owner of Piano Craft in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas, and I will be getting up in the business of how Richard started and expanded his small business, of what makes a good piano great, and how to improve or learn the art of piano playing. Through our storytelling, you will hear how we maneuvered the path of leadership and entrepreneurship in pursuit of our dreams. And we'll be answering questions, giving advice, and you can give your advice via phone and email. My business experience began over 40 years ago when I founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, Arkansas Flag and Banner has grown and morphed from door-to-door sales to telemarketing to mail order and catalog sales, and now we rely heavily on the Internet. Each change in sales strategy required a change in company thinking and procedures. My confidence, leadership knowledge, and my company grew. My initial $400 investment now produces nearly four million in annual sales. Each week on this show, you'll hear candid conversations between me and my guest about real world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that I hope you'll find interesting. Running a business or organization is like so many things. It takes persistence, perseverance, and patience. I worked part-time jobs for nine years before Arkansas Flag and Banner grew enough to support just me. It's now grown and expanded so much that to operate efficiently, we require, are you ready for this? A purchasing, manufacturing, graphic, shipping, technology, accounting, marketing, sales, and customer service department, plus a retail store. 25 people make their living from working at Arkansas Flag and Banner. I hope you'll take advantage of this unique opportunity to ask questions or share your experience by calling or emailing me and my guest on today's show. Before we start, I want to introduce the people at the table. We have Tim Bowen, our technician, who will be taking your calls and pushing the buttons. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. My guest today is Richard Deutsch. How would I do? So close. So close. Say it right. Say it right for me. Deutsch. Deutsch. I try to make it bigger than it is. Deutsch. Deutsch. Owner of Piano Craft, located on South Main in Little Rock, Arkansas. His store was one of the cornerstone businesses for the revitalization and redevelopment of the historic South Main neighborhood. Like most small businesses, his began as a relatively unknown store and has since grown into one of the largest piano stores in Arkansas. In 2013, Piano Craft added guitars and music accessories to its product line. Deutsch is a business owner with the heart of a philanthropist as he uses piano craft to not only sell musical instruments, but also to improve the lives of others through the art of music and music philanthropy. Piano craft is a supporter of the Hot Springs Music Festival, the Central Arkansas Library System, the public school system, local theaters, and Oxford American Magazine, just to name a few. A few years ago, after the devastating tornadoes that hit several towns in Arkansas, namely Mayflower and Valonia, Piano Craft partnered with Yamaha Corporation of America to provide musical assistance to schools and churches in need. It is an honor to welcome to the table musician, philanthropist, and business owner Richard Deutsch. Thank you. You made a face when I was talking about all you do for everybody. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're modest. Uh, yeah, but I also have, um, well... Yeah, I'm modest. There you go. <laughs> we'll, go with, we'll go with that. Everybody knows me and there's laughing right now. But <laughs> <laughs> You're modest with a big personality. Thank you. That's what it is. You believe in the power of music and healing. Why yes. is that so? Because it's fact. It's, I believe in the power of music and education also, which is even more important. Um, 
which is why we do the programs that we do, like with the Central Arkansas Library Systems, Arkansas Sounds. Um, that uh, it's actually the largest concert program of its kind in the United States. Right here in Arkansas? Yeah, we've been doing it for three years now, um, which is lots of library systems have concerts at their main library at, on a regular basis to bring the arts in. But we actually take an $80,000 piano to each one of the local libraries. How many is that? Uh, well, they have 16. We do 10 a year. You take a piano there? An $80,000 semi-concert grand. And leave it? We take it for the concert that night and bring it back. Do you know how hard it is to move a piano? Just to rent that piano is $2,500 a night. But when it's an $80,000 piano, you have the issues of damage, insurance, and all those fun things. I was about and that, to say. That is being off, and we're allowed to do that because of the help that we get from the Kauai, who's the manufacturer of the piano. Oh, you do a lot of partnerships with manufacturers, don't you? Well, they allow me to use that semi-concert grant for this program because otherwise they would be a little upset if I was carting around an $80,000 piano. So you were, so that's an important part of your business is working with your suppliers to do co-op work in your state. As best as possible. It's very difficult for manufacturers to do as much as that in our business, in the piano business, because there's not enough business. Today, there are just as many... It, well, let's put it this way. In 1920, the population of the United States was at a certain amount, and we sold a certain amount of pianos. Today, we sell half the amount of pianos we sold in 1920. The other half is sold in digital pianos. So we're still selling the exact same amount of units between electronic pianos and acoustic pianos, but we have three times the population. That's because of TVs. Well, that's because of TV and because music's not important in our education as much as it should be. I love the idea when you watch the old movies where they sat around in the piano room and everybody visited and talked and got up and shared their, not professional, but just their, their gifts with each other. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just so civilized. People are amazed when, like, their great-grandfather, you know, that may still be alive, uh, that are in the 90s, will walk by a piano and all of a sudden be able to play something. They're like, we didn't know he could play piano because most people in that age group took piano lessons. Really? Pianos were not, if pianos were in every home, old uprights, you name it, because that was the entertainment. They had radio, barely. Barely. Before that, you know, in 1800. And they had, enter you know, home entertainment, piano, education. So why do you think uh, piano and education go hand in hand? Are you talking about well, like music math? and education? Are you talking about math skills that go math to skills. piano? Um, children, it's a proven fact that children who have taken five years of music lessons or longer graduate in the top ten percent of their class, do better in their ACTs and the SATs, are better in their math skills. They have better cognitive thinking and abstract thinking because they use both sides of their mind. Oh, and. It also helps pay for college. Children who take five years or more usually get more than 50% of their college paid through scholarships. You mean, uh, you mean music scholarships or just general scholarships because scholarship they're smarter? Because not, not necessarily, one, because they're smarter, but they're more well-rounded. And, and they're music disciplined. Is part, and they're disciplined. The music is part of a well-rounded situation. If a child's got a 4.0 grade point average and another child's got a 4.0 grade point average or another high school student and they're trying to apply for a college the one that has music lessons is going to get that grant or scholarship before the one that doesn't i never thought of it like that you also believe in the power of healing through music and you gave you did a lot for the tornado victims and communities in Valoni and mayflower Talk we tried that. to do the best we could we actually had a lot of problems with the media to get that out why uh, we only got one station to carry it and uh th that was channel 11 they only want to talk about this bad stuff, and that's humans' fault because humans only want to hear that. I actually, the, the company that was doing the um, marketing of it, or you know, the, to get the information out, uh, was calling me going, what is wrong with these people in Arkansas? This is perfect timing. It's a feel-good story. It's great information. And I got them in the log cabin out of Conway. Conway. <laughs> And they actually didn't do it, run to the story until three weeks after it, three weeks later. Well, I think that speaks to, uh, Amer to the human nature. We just like gossip and negative stories, you know? Yeah. I, don't, I hate to say that. 
But yeah. I'm, I'm sure that they're in the business of knowing what people want to hear. But I agree that would have been a lovely story to get the word out. Uh, you, when I came in and met you, I just met you a few weeks ago, and when I came in, I heard you play effortlessly on a piano in your store while you were selling. I am not a musician. You are not a musician? How I could pl- you play so good and with so much passion? Because I've been in this business for 30 years, and I play music that I like, but I play to sell. Matthew, I just burst your bubble, I know. I, Matthew, you and I heard him play. Would you think he's not a musician? No, he's good. He was good. To people who play, I c- I'm not a player. To people who don't play, yeah, yeah. And to people who don't play, I'm a player. Oh. But I would never sit down with a group of musicians and say, oh, come on, let's, get, let's have a... Well, little- that was my next question. Why are you selling musical instruments and not performing them? It's because you don't think you're good enough to perform with musicians. Yeah, I'm not. Well, how it's did not you I don't get- think, I'm how- not. How did you even get in the business of the piano? I sold shoes. Oh, I did too one time. But that I, doesn't have anything to do with <laughs> pianos or flags. <laughs> no, I was working in a, in a mall uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, and a um, gentleman came in, and I was playing with this little Casio calculator that looked like a piano. And he happened to work at the Lowry Organ Centers across the, str- across the corner in the mall. And for, oh, I don't know, two months, he kept trying to get me to go to work for him because he was opening up a new location, and he wanted salespeople. And finally, he just walked in, and he asked me how much I made, and I told him I made 2000 a month, a month, which was about $500 more a month than I was actually making. And he said, okay, I'll guarantee you twice what you make for six months if you come to work for me in writing. Well, let's see, young, single, stupid, money, dating, yeah, I'm good. I left working for shoes and started selling organs. You have just given the biggest tip to our young listeners. You never know who's watching that's what Skip Rutherford said a couple of months ago. You never, when he was on the show a couple of weeks ago, you never know who's watching. So always do a good job. You never know where your next job's coming from. I have a friend who was working at Grady's Pizza Parlor who's making six figures now, and he was a waiter at Grady's Pizza Parlor, and one of his customers said, you are a top-notch guy. Come to work for me. And he did, and he went through the ranks all the way up in this company. So anybody listening young out there, just take a job and do it good, and you never know where it's going to lead. So this is a great place to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Richard's store, Piano Craft. We're going to learn about pianos, their different styles, and what makes a good piano great. And last, we'll get helpful tips from this expert on how to improve or learn the art of piano playing. He's frowning over there. You've got to know. You sell them. You've got to know. I'm speaking today with Richard Teutsch. Owner of Piano Craft. How'd I do, Richard? Much Did I better. say it right? right. Oh, I don't know why that's so hard for me. I'm like impaired. Um, Richard, you moved here from Dallas, Texas. When, why, and was Piano Craft founded in Dallas or founded in Little Rock? Actually, uh, Piano Craft was founded in Little Rock by uh, my ex partner. Oh, really? Uh, and he had. He was very close to not being open any longer and uh, just happened things were working certain ways in Dallas I had things going on there and it just looked like a great opportunity so I bought into the company and then four years later I bought him out so you learned to sell pianos in Dallas no learned to sell pianos in Austin I mean Austin oh that's right you said Austin you were working at a mall selling shoes in Austin Mm -hmm. you learned to sell them in Austin and then how'd you end up in Dallas uh, when I left that company after a few years, um, I had moved to a couple of different places. Um, had went back to Dallas where my family was. Uh, my mother, and your mother and father, lived, mother and sister lived, and my dad lived in there. And um, started working and uh, in another got, piano store. No, actually, uh, actually, yes, in a piano store that I only worked there about thirty days because. Bad they, owner. They had no clue. Yeah. Um, Bad actually, management. And then um, started working selling tote the note cars. I found out people have more money than they actually tell you they have. Tote the note cars. If I ever open a used car lot, I am going to steal that. That is, that's what it is. Tote, they call it tote the notes, you know, in Dallas. And um, so you're a used car salesman. And the lady who owned literally. the place, literally, and it was the most educational I, thing I have can say. That you learn about people, 
but I would never want to do it for a living. But the owner of it, the lady wanted a little white and gold piano, and I knew that the manufacturer that I was once selling in Austin, um, the rep lived in Dallas, so I gave him a call, and he told me that he had a job for me in the piano business. And then I eventually became president of that company, which was what called was Dal- Dallas Piano Warehouse. What's a white and gold piano? The color white and gold? Yeah, white, like a Louis the Fourteenth look. Oh, how adorable. I want one of those. Is it a spinet? No, no, it was a baby grape. I love that. So you moved. So then you end up moving to Little Rock. Yeah, after twenty years, I moved to Little Rock thirteen years ago, fourteen years ago. Why did you pick Little Rock? Because the opportunity for my first of all, my in-laws live in towards Moralton. Oh, okay. And we in Arkansas. come up here to visit. Oh. And I met uh, the gentleman at a show in Dallas at a teachers' convention, and I told him I just dropped by. He sold some of the same products that we sold in Dallas and. Uh, the store in Dallas, we were one of the largest stores in the United States, uh, piano-wise. Uh, and so I you know, stopped by. You never know who can help each other. And, yeah. and uh, he, he actually offered me a job, and I said, well, that's really nice of you, but you can't afford me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I ended up buying the uh, company. So, and, so uh, networking. Well, he was 90 days from closing. He, had, he wow. was done borrowing all the money and doing everything he could, and the thing I did notice in Little Rock is that when I was in Dallas, we had a lot of customers in Little Rock that would come to Dallas and buy pianos. And the reason why is everybody here sold at almost retail. They never advertised much. They didn't take advantage of buying discounts. And they could literally buy it in Dallas cheaper and have it delivered here with paying the delivery than they could buy it here locally. So your connections made piano craft successful too. Yeah, I was I was also in, in manufacturing at one time uh, on the wholesale side, so I have the experience on wholesale and retail. And was it already on Main Street? Yes, store's been on Main Street. It opened on Main Street. So what would you say piano craft does best? Sell. Well, we service and take care of our customers, and we have the huge selection. You sell new and pre-owned. Yes. I've got 100 pianos in stock right now. No, you do not. Yes, which we are trying to get down to about 70, so we're having a clearance or an inventory reduction sale because we're actually um, reducing the size of our store 1,400 square feet. Where are you keeping all those pianos? Well, you know, when you walked in, the the grand room has over 30 grands in it. It did? Yeah. Well, when you look at your website, you can see this long... It it doesn't feel like it's as long as it is with as many pianos in there. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's 30, 30 grands in there or 28 grands. And we're, the, right now the store is 7,000 square feet, and we're reducing it down to 5,400. And we're, that will still be a huge piano store. So now you're selling guitars. We are selling guitars, and we're also uh, doing band and orchestra rentals and repair. In fact, I just got back from uh, Tampa, Florida to do uh, training for repair on band and orchestra instruments. So that's a new thing that we have started this year. Do you repair pianos too? Yes, we are You do? Yes. I do not tune. I can fix. But those who can learn, those who can't teach, I have no patience. So I do not. I can do the repairs, but I let my technicians do them. I will walk them through things if they come to a stopping point because of 30 years of experience. Are they contract labor or do you have actual employees? I have only employees. employees. How many employees do you have? Two and a half. <laughs> that's not, that's, and one of them's your wife. Uh, she's not an employee. Oh. So I'm not counting her. So, so we have, actually, we have, uh, we have two technicians. One of them is part-time, and then we have uh, two um, movers and me and my wife. When I was in your store, you showed me a piano that you were in love with. Do you know which one I'm talking about? The 1874 Kanabi. Tell our listeners about it. This piano is a -a one-of-a-kind instrument. It was built in 1874. Uh, It was built for the Centennial World's Fair, uh, which was celebrating the 100th anniversary of our great nation. And it was held in Philadelphia. It it is a 10-foot-2 rosewood art case piano, which means it has all four masters carved along the outside of the instrument. Um, Now, what did you say? It's a... What, what means it has four masters? What it has the masters, which is Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, and Chopin, or Chopin if you order Philette Mignons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but those are the four masters <laughs> in the pianos. That was a play on, that he was being funny, y'all. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead. And um, so they're carved on, on the outside of the piano. And it's just got some beautiful scroll work. It has hand-painted uh, florets on the, the 
cast iron plate inside. Who's going to uh, buy that? Ten feet long. Somebody who loves antiques and loves American history. What makes this piano even more unique is according to the Boston Globe, and we haven't been able to verify this other than the article in the Boston Globe. Uh, according to the Boston Globe, President Chester Arthur, who was our 21st president, uh, had selected the Kanabi Rosewood Art Case Concert Grand featured at the Centennial World's Fair as his presidential piano. If we could get some verification of that from the White House, which takes a senator or a congressman to get somebody to go look something up there, the piano's value would be a lot higher. What do you think it'd be? Uh, between two hundred fifty and 700000 Right now, the piano's 150000 you would saw so, how do you Salisbury Salisbury how do you say that auction house? Sotheby's Sotheby's yeah Sotheby's they, or Christie's would take would would sell it on consignment. can they help you find out the office? no they're not going to do that and we could pay somebody at the Smithsonian but that's really hard to do because they charge you like not at the Smithsonian but people who go in if they don't know the piano industry and what to look for at four hundred dollars an hour I'm not paying somebody to do that. Well, who is your congressman? You need to get somebody. French Hill. We uh, we're friends with him, right? Yeah, we need to call up a French. There we go. Get him on the phone. No. <laughs> you seriously should. He is so helpful at everything. That's the only way, because I called the, um, the different departments that they put me into, and the first one they put me into was the gift, and gift does not give you any information at all. They just say, we can't give you information, and they, actually it's a recording. But back in that time when gifts were given to presidents, they didn't get stored. They took them with them. Oh. Okay. Now we have a White House piano. So you're not getting, as the presidential, you know, it's the White House piano, not a presidential piano. Do you teach lessons at your place? We do have lessons. We're in between teachers right now. Our teacher moved on uh, for piano, but we also teach guitar. Um, and those people are contract, I bet. Yes, because the, the laws of Arkansas state that if, they, if, we, if we collect money and pay them, even though it's just for studio rental, we have to pay workman's comp. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But. So any piano teachers out there that need a home to teach lessons, come see me. Come see Piano Craft, Richard at Piano Craft. So there's different types of pianos. I've owned three of these five pianos. I've owned an upright, a spinet, and a baby grand. But there's also the big grand and the electric. Do you have a preference? It depends on what the use is for. I love uh, acoustic pianos, uh, which is your standard piano, whether it be a grand or an upright. So there's your two types. And then you, this term spin it or console describes height. Oh, is that what that means? And anything that's a grand or baby grand, they're all grand pianos. Oh. But the term baby grand, grand, parlor grand, is describing length, concert grand, that type of thing. Um, Obviously, the bigger an acoustic piano is, the bigger the piano, the better it sounds. It's the difference between an 8-inch speaker and a 15-inch speaker. Mm. You have more tone coming out. And then, of course, the better the quality, the difference between a Kmart brand speaker and a Bose sound system. Um, and that makes a huge difference in the tonal quality of the instrument. I don't like the way spinets sound. No, the strings are very short. They're, ta- they're twangy. They're That's because most of them are t- over 30 years old and nobody took care of them. They're tinny. <laughs> uh, and then I love the way an upright sounds. It's real thick, or I'm not really sure what the... Do you know and what I'm saying? It depends on which one you play. If it's been one that's taken care of, then it's going to play well. And tone is... The tone of the piano is purely subjective. Yeah. So some people like a really bright tone, some people like a, a mellow tone, or a darker tone. Uh, and that's, that's personal preference. There is no right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and quality, there's a lot of great instruments out there. 70% of pianos today are built in China. Seems like that'd be cost prohibitive to ship it over here. No, because China, it's not only because of the price of labor, but it's also because China's the largest market in the world for pianos. Really? Look at all the people. And yeah. they all are starting to make more and more money. So, and then there's the Suzuki form of... That's a teaching method, of, and that's a group lesson that starts with uh, different styles. And there's a teaching, a teacher should... Do, Parents should select select teachers by their comfort level. If they're interviewing somebody for a job, a teacher knows how. To, a teacher teaches music. I teach people about pianos. I would never tell a teacher how to teach piano. And teachers don't normally know a whole lot about pianos. They know what they like. 
They know the tone they like. They know the tone they like. They know the feel they like. Or they're just used to a brand name they like. What is the history of the piano? It's, a lot of people don't realize it, but it is a harp on its side, basically. Yeah, it started as a harpsichord. It's a string instrument. Actually, yes and no. It's string and percussion. Okay. But uh, it actually, the, uh, originally, the, it was a harpsichord um, where it was actually plucking the strings. Uh, and then later on, um, Cristofori, who uh, invented the piano over 300 years ago, uh, created a striking motion where it struck the string. And, and that's the piano, piano forte. What country is he from? Uh, it would be Italy. I was in Washington, D.C. one time, and I was walking through a mall. I think it was the Kennedy Center. And they had a girl playing the piano. I don't guess that's a mall, but it was the Kennedy Center. And I was, and they had a girl out in the lobby playing the piano. She was standing on the bench, reaching inside to her grand piano, and plucking the strings. And did it was beautiful. That is, uh, people have come up with some great, unique things that they do with instruments. Uh, that is very bad. Your oil on your skin is real bad on brass strings. It, it, it actually deteriorates it. But, yes, there's a lot of people who do that. In fact, my uncle, who is a, a professor of music at Bournemouth University in England, uh, he actually started the um, doctoral program of how to write music for film and television. And he's a guest lecturer on the, the National Film and Television Institute. He decided that he was going to start doing composing of just piano, and he had a 30-year-old keyboard that was not up to his par. Uh-huh. So he contacted me, and we ended up finding an instrument that he is just in love with, a digital piano called a kawaii, and it's their hybrid. And it actually has a real soundboard on it, so it gives tone, uh, besides just speakers. It sounds more realistic. But um, he was telling me that he has a program uh, that he uses that is designed to... Um, Pretend like it's plucking strings of a piano and things like that. It's oh, okay. recorded all these tones so that you can use them for unique things. Um, but I thought his uh, statement was kind of interesting. If they want to play a harp, they should get a harp. If they want to <laughs> play a piano, they should play a piano. And I was like, oh, my God. So How simple and yet how perfect. Yeah. Uh, this is a, before we go to break, i got one quick question for you. Big box stores like the Guitar Center mm-hmm. have deep pockets and often build industry awareness through their marketing and advertising thus growing your customer base but sometimes they can hurt sales by taking market shares do you have an opinion on these types of corporate stores well first of all guitar center is an american history story oh really yes it is tell us guitar center started as a piano and organ store later on it was bought or it was taken over after the man who started guitar it wasn't guitar center at the time but passed away and a guy named ray shears took it over uh, kind of looked like a big giant Italian mafia guy. Um, and they took that store and they grew it and they grew it and they grew it. And then when they got to a certain point, they had to get more knowledge. It got so big for Ray Shears, he just didn't have the knowledge how to run it. But he was smart enough to get people to run it. And it grew. And through investments, and it, isn't, it's, it is a big box store. And yes, they have buying power. But don't be afraid to do business with them. I'd rather you do business with me, but you have to be proud. I would love to be able to grow and get to that point. And that's what they did. They threw perseverance, talent. So I have nothing I can tell you bad about Guitar Center other than that it is a big box experience. You don't get as close as the service, personalized service. You have to wait in line to get help. Well, and sometimes you have to in my store. I'm the only person there, and there, I may be working two or three people at once. And... Um, but that's, it just seems like uh, in an, our store, if somebody comes in, I can sit there all day and do absolutely nothing. Somebody will come in, so will two others. <laughs> your comments were so gracious, and I appreciate them so much, of what you said about your competitor and sharing that story. What state did they start in? Uh, they started out of California. I'm not afraid of competition. Competition is what brings me business. I agree. And people want to do business. People want a good price, but they also want good service. Mm-hmm. Guitar Center... In the other side, with the guitar side, and the piano music stores are kind of divided. They have what's called a combo or band and instrument stores. Then you have the guitar stores or what they call you know, full line stores. And then, uh, then you have piano stores. And the piano stores at one time were kind of these little elitist guys that we only 
hung out on one floor of the, of the national shows called the National Association of Music Merchants. All the pianos were on the third floor. That's where all the suit and ties went, and everybody else was below them. You know, and uh, it, it's not that way anymore, but Guitar Center does control and have um, great impact on the fretted industry business and the, the MIDI uh, keyboard business. People can compete. When I was in Dallas, the store I worked for for a short time was a block and a half down from Guitar Center selling keyboards, pro keyboards, and we would outsell them. We would not only sell them the same product, but we'd sell it for more money. Right. Price because is not the only reason people It's not the shop. only people buy. They, they bought because we offered them a package, so they got a great value that they weren't getting offered at the other place. And great time. service. And we were literally a block and a half down. That's a great story. So it's not about it's not about the big box. It's about the customer service. It really is. I say that to people all the time at Arkansas Flag and Banner. Don't I, Tim? But we'll never ask my employees to drop something off on the way home. What does that mean? Sorry, that was a dig at Walmart. Well, you can't drop off a <laughs> piano. Hey, you, drop this did, piano did off. Did you not hear the news that, that Walmart was asking their employees to drop, say, drop uh, groceries off? Oh, the way home? no, that went right over my head. I didn't hear that news. <laughs> Tim Th- got it. Thanks for explaining it to me. We, we actually do that. We do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I always get my go. Oh. We actually do it, too. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to get helpful tips from Richard on improving your piano playing and best practices for learning to play the piano, if he knows any. I'm sure he does. He's had a lot of, he's had a lot of experience. We'll also have Richard tell us about some of his favorite community music projects he's worked on. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Kerry McCoy on KABF Radio. My guest is Richard Teutsch. Deutsch. Deutsch. God, I'm so close. She's remembering the toy part. Oh, I did say Teutsch, didn't I? <laughs> Gosh. But she's doing Speaking today with Richard Deutsch, owner of Piano Craft. He's applauding my good, my, my diction. Finally, I got it right. You know, and I'm Kraus. My maiden name's Kraus. You'd think I'd be, my father was German. You'd think I'd be better at pronouncing your name. Well, You're, uh, you've been playing the piano. Playing the piano is hard. Oh, before I ask you this question, I want everybody to know that was heart and soul that we just listened to. And <laughs> Richard, during the break, told us the funniest story. You want to tell it again? Do you want to finish your... No. Oh, darn. Okay. So he hates heart shot. and soul. He's, he, he is I don't so hate sick. heart and soul. He is sick of it. How about that? If you ever watch the Blues Brothers, there's a sign that says, No Stairway to Heaven <laughs> in the guitar store. Because every guitar store is sick of hearing Stairway to Heaven played wrong or in the wrong key. Well, in piano stores, it's heart and soul and Fairlease, which is Fairlease is the da 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 Anyways, we would do, when I was in Dallas, we worked at the state fair. We would just be out there 24 days with a booth and sell pianos and digital pianos. and um, We would put a sign on the piano that said, uh, on our acoustic piano, it said eight coupons per play, which that would help keep the kids from just pounding on the piano. We could say, no, you got to pay. you got to <laughs> pay eight coupons. That's right. And coupons could be reimbursed for food. Yeah. And... Um, but it said, uh, no fair lease, no heart and soul, 16 coupon fine. And one day this lady comes by and she looks at it. She just starts laughing. And she thought it was the funniest thing because she was a classical pianist, professional. And uh, she said, now I have to play it. And I said, well, no. She goes, but I know the whole thing, all like 12 or 14 minutes of it. And I was like, no. And she goes, Why? And I said, because we're here to sell pianos. If you play for 12, 14 minutes, nobody will let me show them. She says, plus you haven't given me any of the coupons. And she goes, well, okay. But, so I'd give you 16 coupons. I said, no, 24, because it's eight coupons to play, but there's a 16 coupon fine if you play one of those two songs. That's 24. She, she's like, why? I said, because if I've got to hear that song, we need to drink. And if we need to drink, there are 12 coupons for a beer, and there's two of us in the booth. <laughs> and she showed up at about 15 minutes to 10 o'clock before the, the, it was closing, and uh, she played the entire piece and brought us two beers, so it was not a bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Playing the piano is hard. Do you think anybody can learn? Anybody can play piano. I don't know about that. If you have two fingers, you can play piano or play digital piano. You just may not play well. Well, here's the thing. 
what's well? As long as you're enjoying it, who cares? Is there a right age to start? Yes. When? When your child is mentally capable of sitting through a 30-minute lesson and focusing, which is anywhere between the ages of four and six, four to seven, because four is a little on the young side. Most teachers will prefer about five. The Suzuki method takes them that young. Uh-huh. Uh, but the uh, most teachers want to see if the child's capable of c- focusing. Right. And then, of course, it's when a child takes lessons, it's the worst thing a parent could do is say, you didn't do your homework. Go practice the piano an extra 20 minutes. You just made your musical instrument a mm. punishment. <laughs> you know, um, mm-hmm. It has to be a positive thing, and the teacher has to be a positive influence on the student. The teacher, if you want your if you want your child to go through full classical style training, mm-hmm. find a teacher that does that. But also, I had a, a a lady come in one time. Oh, she's pushing the mic in front of my face. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I had a lady come in one time, and she uh, told me that she wanted to give her uh, student her, her her child piano lessons, but she wanted to be, her to be taught gospel. And she'd gone through three or four piano teachers, all of them taught gospel but her daughter hated it wow and so when she came into me she told me i said well i have a teacher that is very very good at gospel and especially black gospel and uh, he plays organ and everything so it will work out fantastically so that's great so she brings her daughter in and i asked her daughter so what kind of music do you want to learn and she goes classical and i said well here's the good news we're going to teach you classical piano here we're not going to force you to play gospel. And I thought her mother was going to, her eyes just got really big, and I thought she was going to just kill me right then. And I said, and here's the greatest news. You're going to learn to play piano because you're going to love learning to play. And then maybe a year from now or six months from now, you'll learn a gospel song for your mom. Oh, that's a great story. And the fact of the matter is, is that her mother finally figured out, I want her to learn music. It doesn't have to be gospel. It has to be music. And then let her path take her on her path how old so, was this girl she was 12 she knew what classical was and she yeah. knew what she wanted and then she ended up really liking jazz she took lessons uh through this teacher at that time of about three years and she came every week she smiled you know and practiced and she enjoyed practicing because she was practicing something that she wanted to learn and the, the short i don't have a short story but the <laughs> Bottom line, I guess, is that children need to have incentive. If their incentive is because they want to learn something from Green Day, which is our journey or whatever, if the teacher doesn't give them opportunities or work that into their programs, it takes away from their want to do it. I agree. And if they have to go home and play piano on an old piece of junk upright that won't hold a tune, that doesn't give them an incentive to want to learn. That was going to be my next question. So I've so you can come down there and take piano lessons from you, but then you go. But what if you don't have the money to have a piano at your house? What do you do? Well, you, a lot of churches have pianos. You can go practice there. The thing is, you have to practice. It. A child should, anybody should practice a minimum of twenty minutes a day. Twenty minutes a day practice. A teacher can only guide a student for so long. Okay, and they guide them to make them practice to learn new things so they can help them to the next step. That's what a teacher does. They're a guidance system. So all my children took lessons and didn't like to practice. They didn't mind the lessons. They didn't mind learning music, but they didn't like to practice. And if they don't practice, and one reason is because there were songs they didn't like. Ah. If you, play, you, know, you have to go through certain basics. There are certain basics you have to learn no matter what. Um, you know, the, the Ode to Joy is because is, it's, it's teaching fingering. It's teaching right placement of hands, getting your hands used to where they need to be. So there are basics that have to be done. But there are songs out there that also meet those basics that are more enjoyable. Yeah, they can speak to that child, whatever it is. That's right. And if you've got, you know, you've got a seven or nine year old that's just getting into lessons and they're already listening to pop music, the last thing they want to play is Ode to Joy. Now they will because they're getting a start. And if the family te- treats music as education, you never have the problem of, I don't want to take the piano lesson today, or I don't want to take my violin. Because if a child comes home and goes, Mom, Dad, 
I don't like my English teacher. I'm not taking it yeah. anymore. The answer is, that's funny. And if you get less than a B, uh, we're going to talk about your spanking. You know, that's most parents have a, you don't have a choice. Music in other countries is not a choice. Does the hand size matter? No. I mean, if little kids take? Yeah. But if you're classical, professional, it, you've got to have, be no. able to have, your, your fingers have to be able to stretch uh, from certain to certain, right? Well, it helps you play different styles, but it doesn't stop you from being a good pianist. Can you reach, you know, um, what's the name of the group? Um, now I'm just blanking out. Uh, anyways, the piano, the, the keyboard has a, a 13th reach, which is like an octave and a half, and he plays a song that has this reach. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to play it the way he plays it, you've got to have big hands. But if you want to play it and still enjoy the music, you don't have to hit that particular note. You can hit it at, you know, a lesser note. Okay. So let's say you already play the piano. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm getting inspired. I want to get my grandson. I think he would love the piano. He's kind of got an engineering mind, and he loves math. I think he would probably really like it, and he loves pounding on stuff. <laughs> so he can come down there and learn from you when you get a piano teacher, but he's going to have to practice 20 minutes every day. And that's going to be the hard part for him, sitting still. But if it's something he enjoys? So we won't know till we try it. One of the things that also happens is that the reason why the digital pianos have been taken so big is because, one, there's headphones. Two, there's other sounds. Parents don't necessarily want their children to be pianists. Yes, we don't want want him to grow up to be a... music. Yes, that's right. So one thing that has happened is the children that take lessons on digital instruments, that their teachers work with them on them, tend to learn more in a shorter amount of time. Mm-hmm. So you are not opposed to using an electronic piano at home? No, because most digi- most a six hundred and ninety nine dollar keyboard sold by Kawhi that we sell, uh-huh. eighty eight note feels like a piano would be a better sound and a better feel, and I'm talking about a high quality six ninety nine keyboard, not one of the little Casios. Uh-huh. Okay, have a better sound and a better feel than a forty year old spinet. Yeah. And it's electronic, which they like. It never needs tuning. They can use headphones when they're not taking their practice time. And there's an incentive. You want to use the other features of it? Great. Put the the drums behind. Put the drums in. Here's the headphones. Oh, I think that'd be fun. Enjoy it. Do that after your practice time. Now, if the teacher tells them to use drums with it to learn syncopation and things like that, Mm -hmm. that's a totally different story. So let's say you are. uh, This is great tips for people out there. If you already play the piano but feel you are stuck in your progression, do you have a tip for breaking through the block? Uh, find a teacher if you don't have one and there are teachers out there that will work with you they don't necessarily going to take you back to square one they realize that hey you're wanting to play the piano for yourself you're, and you're wanting to learn new riffs or different things or to help you move to a different section we had a good gentleman that took lessons in our store that the only thing he wanted to learn was the intro to every rock song ever made <laughs> he's a drummer uh, and he actually owns a guitar teaching studio so but he came to lessons, and that's all he wanted to learn is how to play the opening of every song. And you weren't opposed to that? He, he, the teachers rent studio from us. Yeah, okay. whatever, whatever. So, and then people, because of our name, will call us, and we'll get them in touch with a teacher that we like. So many professions have continuing education, mm-hmm. or not even professions, but continuing your education through all of your life is important. So it does make sense to keep doing that with a piano, if you like playing the piano. Continue your education by occasionally getting a, well, it, a teacher. Well, if you're trying to learn new things, you know, I learn new things because I play at all different times. People say, do you have a piano at home? And I say, no. Well, you don't need one. you got a whole store full I got, of them. i got a hundred of them. And when I go home, the last thing I want to do is play piano. Yeah. Because I can relax at work and play piano. Or I'll stay late and play piano. I don't read music. I play out of fake books. And I just play for my own enjoyment. You don't read music? Mm-mm. Do you think that it's better well, to be... Well, I can si- actually tell you what notes. I understand theory, mm-hmm. I, but I don't read music. So you just play from your ear? No. I play from a big note songbook that writes the letters in there. And over 30 years, I've learned some tricks to the trade. Oh, Richard, I love you. You are just humble and confessing and gracious You know, there's a gentleman by the name of Scott Houston that created a program called Play Piano in a Flash. It was on PBS. Yeah. Okay? It is the old one-finger organ method changed for piano. It's great. And he, made a, he, came to, he was in our store doing a seminar one time, and he said, 
Nobody goes home and says, I want to learn a piano. I've never pl- I want to learn a song I've never pl- heard before. Yeah. Nobody does that. Nobody goes, hmm, I think I want to go learn a song I've never heard before. So his thing is, don't worry about timing. Don't worry about the theory. Play it. Happy Enjoy birthday. It. And if you play it, hum it. If It doesn't make a difference. You're not trying to be a professional. You're not out there entertaining. Well, my seven-year-old would like to learn happy birthday. It would just probably make his day if he could learn that and play it at every one of the no, birthday as long parties. As gives the, I think he has to pay the rights for that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Talk we actually, a, we actually a, have to pay because we run these player systems and we'll take them to outside markets. Mm-hmm. We have to pay the uh, generic ASCAP because to protect for mm-hmm. take care of artists mm-hmm. who deserve it. Um, talk about muscle memory for your hands. I, I'm not a doctor. Well, I know that when my kids are playing, they would play they would play this note and then they would make a mistake and they would start at the beginning and they'd play it again and they'd make a mistake. That's, a, that's the biggest problem in learning. Now I understand what you're talking about. Everybody, when they make a mistake playing piano, mm-hmm. they stop right then and start over thinking that they're going to get past it. But what they're really practicing is making a mistake. What they need to do is when they make a mistake, keep playing, work through it. The fingers will find their self. But if you just keep stopping every time you make a mistake, ah, oh, darn and then start again. Oh, darn. All you're doing is perfecting making a mistake. <laughs> and I wish I knew that when my kids were playing because I didn't learn that till the very last child was playing. And somebody said they need to slowly go through that and get the muscle memory of how to play it right and then speed it up slowly over mm-hmm. and over. And I, I wish I'd have realized that tip before. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Richard Deutsch, owner of Piano Craft. We've got eight minutes left. I want to hear about some of your uh, fundraisers and okay. philanthropy that you've done. You've supported the Hot Springs Musical Festival, the Central Arkansas Library System, the public school system, local theaters, Oxford American Magazine, and after the devastating Arkansas tornadoes that went through Mayflower and Valonia, Piano Craft provided musical assistance to schools and churches. Which one of those do you want to talk about? Now or after the break? Now. We're not going to take a break. That oh. was our break. I just told them who you were in case anybody tuned in. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was thinking about taking a break. But I just really wanted everybody to know in case they just tuned in who you were and who we were speaking okay. with. Uh, so right now my, my pet project is the Sounds in the Stacks program. And that's the one you said that it was the largest one in America? It's, this is the largest program. According to John Miller, the uh, person from Arkansas Sounds, as part of the Cal system, uh, well, this is the largest music what, program. Tell what Cal system is. Central Arkansas Library System okay. is Cal's. Okay. Um, Arkansas Sounds is a part of the uh, Cal system. Uh, they help do, like, the, the Ron Robinson Theater or music selections and things like that. That's, I don't know. You'll have to ask them. But um, John and I came up with this program three years ago, and this is our third season. We are excited about it. The program brings – my whole idea was to bring quality music to the local libraries, to the local people, without charging them, doing an hour upfront and personal – uh, concert where it wasn't all just music. It was ask the person questions. We've actually had kids come up and play with the artists. I mean, it was to incite children to want to play and be musically inclined, period. Uh, one of the uh, – we had a, a, an unfortunate situation uh, where we had like three people show up to the event. And Del Smith, who's a local player, uh, and he – I was I was upset because we were weren't a whole bunch of people there that wasn't shared well enough. Yeah, but they didn't do a what, press release or something. Yeah, well, it just they, they, we won't get into that. But the bottom mm-hmm. line is, I wasn't real happy about it. But the artist that we had hired, uh, and he is internet. He's known nationally. He's done different events, different things, and he's known locally. That's he took this one child and started playing and and having him play and press button and press the the piano keys. And when that child left with his mom, she was like, it does what for his college education? It it makes how much cheaper? (laughs) And saw some. And that right there made that whole event worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And 
that's the thing. We want people to know that, one, the Central Arkansas Library System is open for more than just books. They have a lot of other programs to, for the arts and for education. That's a great so we've supported that for three years, and we're, we take an $80,000 piano uh, 99% of the time to uh, 10 of the libraries per year. So how do people find out about it? They can go to our website, which is pianocraft.com. They can go to the CALS website, Central Arkansas Library Systems, and look uh, through Arkansas Sounds. Um, and the, there's posters. And then uh, Channel 7 is our partner with that. And they actually, uh, Ned Purby is going to be doing our next concert, yep. which is July 27th, I think. I'll have to, I'm not sure on that, so check my website. I just got the final bookings on that. Okay. Um, but he is playing July 27th, so that's really exciting. But he announces it uh, during the 6 o'clock news when the concerts are going to be the week before. Um, you just told our listeners how to get in touch with you. Is the best way to get in touch with you through your website or to no, call? No, call. I am old school. I want to talk. So um, now if you want me to remember, we have to put it down somewhere. But other than that, uh, call that's, 501-372-1446. But well, that's what your wife's for. She will put it down for you and put it on your calendar. You've met my wife. Yes. No. You two have a lot in common. Yes. Fiery. Yes. Fun. Very stubborn. Fun. I'm not stubborn, am I, Tim? Not in the slightest. No. <laughs> <laughs> Was that sarcasm? And then I got I got in trouble when I met when I first met you. I said, "Oh yeah, you're the one that's crazy." Oh yeah. It's actually, not, don't say that. Actually, you. Well, we don't have enough time to say what you really said. <laughs> but I, I appreciate you know, having me on your show. This is a great show, and it's great that people want to hear and listen to different things going on and. Like some of the 12-step programs. Maybe somebody in business was listening out there and something we talked about helps them. Wow, that was really well said. Uh, I'm going to thank you, Richard. It has been a real pleasure getting to know you. Thank you. I really didn't realize what a cool dude you are. This cigar is for birthing your business and for giving quality of life to so many people through your musical contributions. Well, this is a beautiful cigar. It is, isn't it? Um, it, it came from the Humidor Room at Colonial Wine and Spirits on Markham Street in Little Rock, Arkansas. Tim, who's my guest next week? Next week we are going to have all three of the Bruno's brothers. The Bruno brothers from L- Little Italy. I love that place. Thanks again, Richard. Thank you're, you. You're awesome. Uh, if you have a great entrepreneurial story you would like to share, I would love to hear from you. Send a brief bio and your contact info to questions at upyourbusiness.org and someone will be in touch. And finally, to our listeners, thank you for spending time with me. If you think this program's been about you, you're right, but it's also been for me. Thank you for letting me fulfill my destiny. My hope today is that you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. If you miss any part of the show or want to learn more about UIYB, go to FlagandBanner.com and click on Radio Show. Like us on Facebook or subscribe to her weekly podcast wherever you like to listen. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week with links to resources you heard discussed on today's show. Underwriting opportunities available upon request. Carrie's goal is to help you live the American dream.